thank you for appearing on the Nancy Stevens Show. I'm so thrilled to be talking to Emma Sullivan, who is the director of Milton Keynes Theatre. And this is my first podcast since last year. Welcome, Emma. Oh, nice to see you, Nancy. How are you? I'm really good. It's so lovely to see you again. It really is. Thank you for being on the Nancy Stevens Show. I know this is a first as well. It is, yeah. We've had lots of uh, performers from the theatre be on your show, I believe, but first time for me. Absolutely. Oh, it's so lovely. Honestly, I, I couldn't be more thrilled. I'm just, I think everybody's really excited. There's a real sense of anticipation in the air. And uh, yeah, I'm so really happy that theatres are finally opening long overdue. So yeah, so tell me a little bit about Milton Keynes Theatre's reopening plans, because it's imminent, isn't it? Yes, I think we're two weeks, two weeks to go till we reopen, or two weeks yesterday. Um, so we're very, very, very excited. Um, got a team, there's 150 of us who work at the theatre when we're open, um, as usual, not all working at the same time, but 150 people in the team. And um, they're all just so looking forward to coming back. Um, so our opening date is Sunday, the 25th of July. The lovely Jane Morgan. Uh, no, I keep calling her Jane, Jane McDonald. Jane McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I never know um, you mean. The lovely Jane McDonald, uh, who you'll all know from Loose Women, is going to be our opening um, act. And it, we couldn't be more delighted because she's such a lovely, warm, bubbly character. And I think she'll, she'll almost give the audience a big metaphorical cuddle on our first yeah. back. I think... Yeah. Um, you know, people are going to feel a bit nervous about coming back to the theatre. You know, we're all doing things like you just said about today's podcast. We're all doing things we haven't done for a long time, aren't we? Um, but she'll be the perfect show um, because she has such a following. I think we're going to be completely sold out that night. So we've we've waited to reopen uh, Milton Keynes Theatre until we could do that socially dist without any socially distance um, seating happening. So we will be... Um, a totally sold out show on opening night, which will also be lovely to see the buzz of the crowd back in the theatre again. Incredible. And in terms of obviously there's going to be the usual questions that, you know, people are going to be nervous. They are going to be apprehensive. They're going to be super excited, you know, for all the theatre buffs who've really missed it. Uh, but how, how is the theatre planning to kind of implement that, that the safety measures and, and, and making people feel safe because if, if distancing isn't going to be a thing? Certainly, yeah. Um, well, the first thing to say is the government guidelines are still being decided. So there's still lots of conversations being had, but I can talk about what's most likely to be the measures that will be in place in a fortnight's time. I mean, there will certainly be sanitizer stations throughout the theater. There will be most people probably wearing masks. It might not be mandatory when we reopen, but that will be an option for both our customers and our staff. Um, but I think the big thing that will be different is we are very likely to be um, using the COVID certification process, um, which is a pass that people will be able to demonstrate on the front doors uh, that if they've got the COVID pass, then they'll be admitted. And there's lots of options for how you can demonstrate that. That might be taking a lateral flow test before you come, that might be a letter from your doctor, that might be a COVID pass on your phone. So lots of options that we will communicate to all our audiences. Um, but we really think that that measure will help to build confidence amongst returning audience to make them feel happy about coming back to the theatre. So it's a necessary step to take. Sure. And for you as theatre director, I bet you could never in a you know, million years, all, you know, all the time that you've been director of Milton Keynes Theatre, you could never have foreseen this. And how have you managed this personally? How's, how's it been for you on a personal level? Well, it's been a strange year for everybody, hasn't it? Um, I mean, for me at the theatre, I have missed everybody. I've missed audiences coming through our doors, but I've really missed the team. And I've, you know, I work with the most fantastic group of people. Yeah. Who they do. Um, and to not be working with them every day has been really, really hard. Um, I've spent a lot of the time over the last 12 months making sure I try and keep in touch with everybody and communicating well to the team to make them feel connected, to still make them feel engaged and part of our theatre family, which they are, of course, of course are. Um, and I'm delighted that the vast majority are all coming back. Um, the government uh, JRS scheme has really helped us um, be able to keep all of our staff employed. And if people haven't um, chosen to go and do other jobs, most of them will all be returning to us. So uh, that's the biggest difference for me is not, it, 
this last year has been to be, I've been working from home lots of the weeks, which many people have been doing too. Um, that's been difficult and strange to get used to. But this building's been cold and dark. Mm -hmm not lit and and that's not what a theatre should be so I'm just looking forward to a show on the stage again and singing and music and um, people laughing and having a good time um, that's what I've missed the most. Absolutely I think we've all missed that terribly and every time I've driven past the theatre which is pretty much on a daily basis my heart has just been felt so sore because as you say it's 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 dark you know when, when theatres went dark last year it was it was a it was a dark day, literally, for, for all of us involved in the arts and the theatre. And uh, I think people have been incredibly resourceful and it's, it's been so tough. I think the arts industry, I mean, lots of industries have been really hard hit, obviously retail and hospitality and stuff. But the arts, I feel, has been really shortchanged. And, you know, I do think the government have been quite late to the party trying to get you know, make make decisions. And I know as a, you know, I, I sing with a choir and I know we're we're only allowed six people in a room. And I think, gosh, but you know, people off at Wembley and, you know, it's it seemed a bit conflicting sometimes. Have you been frustrated with that? I think we have all, you know, whatever we all do for a job, we've all seen in our personal lives how terrible this virus has been. And as as a nation but also probably across the world too we've all done our bit haven't we we've done what asked of us because we want to be able to ultimately get to the, the point where we can all live a normal life again and not have these restrictions so i guess it has been frustrating but we've also remained hopeful that we would get back to um having live theater again and i suppose two years ago 18 months ago i always thought i worked in a theater a place of entertainment now i feel like i work in a place that is um a mass gathering hall you know that's what it's become about you know that's why theater has been hit so hard because so many people come together in one room to watch it but i think we are also um um driven to watch live entertainment see to see something happen in front of us that will never happen again in quite the same way that i feel hopeful and confident that everyone will want to come back to that and we were of course prepared to be patient and wait until it was safe to do that again and it's a primeval instinct you know human nature to be entertained i mean this is something we've been doing since time immemorial it's so natural i think it's i think yes it's going to be going to feel very different have a very different feel but I think people are going to be audiences are going to be so full of joy and I think it's going to be such a happy moment honestly I cannot wait we've all been talking about how we'll feel in two weeks time and I, I do think it's going to be joyful but I think it's going to be so emotional as yeah, well yeah. you know a half an hour call um, and a, you know all those um, radio announcements and things that we were just used to happening in the theatre and we haven't heard for so long it's going to be mm incredibly emotional that first night and even for the first few weeks absolutely and um is this because i heard a rumor that we there was going to do away with intervals are we still having interval yeah definitely still having an interval last um christmas when we were hoping to go ahead with a pantomime and in the end um that couldn't happen um we that was going to be a show without without an interval but that was just a special show because of okay. when it but yeah all of our shows coming up if they would have had an interval before they will again fantastic and amazing shows coming up i mean obviously as you say kicking off with jane mcdonald who is such a joy but the first show i mean if you're going to do if you're going to do an opening show you're doing rocky <laughs> horror i mean there is no better show um second to this second to the 7th of august i mean that is such a career i mean i've seen it about nine times i'm a massive fan but it is going to be such an amazing show to come back to isn't it because it is it is so bonkers and it is it kind of sums up what theatre is about because that is the most interactive show there is apart from Panto really isn't it yeah because people who know Rocky Horror Show well will know there's scripted things for the audience yeah. to say and do aren't there so you know as you say it's it's the only show probably apart from pantomime with that level of audience participation but it is such a party show you know people will dress up people um it it's a great show to reopen with and i mean you sound like a real fan of the rocky yeah. horror yourself, nancy but sometimes we have people who come back three four five times in the week it's with us you know wow. uh diehards love that show but i think it also brings a new audience every time it comes because there are also people who come thinking oh yeah i've heard of the rocky horror show 
that'd be a good one to see. And then they just are not prepared <laughs> for the costumes that they'll see in the audience or for everybody participating. Um, so yeah, we're really looking forward to that one. And I'm trying. I'm trying to decide whether I, you know, because I, I always go in drag, and I and I went to one press night. And I didn't go in drag, and I didn't enjoy it as much. So I, I'm trying to plug up the courage to come to my first theatre night in at press night in dr full drag. So I'm just kind of bracing myself for that one. But I just need to. Important. You need to pick a friend who's really up for it to come with you, and then you can come well, to. I'll, I'll be bringing my other half who's never seen Rocky Horror before. So I'm, you know, I'm just like, yeah, just brace yourself. But no, it's going to be amazing. And obviously a fantastic star. I've got Ori Aduba starring. I mean, he's such a draw from Strictly anyway. He's, he's just a, a, he has such an amazing following as well. Not just as a sports journalist as, as he was before, but from Strictly. And he's so beloved now. And I think that that's such a great draw, isn't it? Yeah. And he really won everybody over, didn't he, in Strictly? People yeah. just support him. So he's great casting. Yeah. Uh, no, so, and then other great shows, you've got Grease, Adam's Family, River Dance, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, Rock of Ages, that's exciting, I think I saw that in Northampton last, and Waitress is the thing I'm probably the most excited about, I mean that's, you know, that's a great thing about Milton Keynes Theatre, so you get all these amazing shows from the West End, it's just, it's a phenomenal theatre, I mean what, 1400 seats, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Actually, Waitress, I think, is the show I'm most looking forward to seeing this autumn, because it's, it's brand new for us, it's obviously had a huge successful run uh, in the West End and I think in America but um, I can't wait to see that one and we really have got uh, following on from Waitress some some brilliant shows coming up I mean much anticipated um, visit from the We Will Rock You company because that show I think has been postponed twice and it's uh, I think nearly a, already a total sellout but I mean that is going to be really popular. Matthew Bourne, um, his company are back with Nutcracker this time um, We've got School of School of Rock coming, which is a West End transfer. Um, we're very lucky to have such a supportive audience in the catchment area around Milton Keynes Theatre. And I think because the audience is so supportive and come a lot, producers want to bring their shows to us. So this uh, lovely situation where we really do get amazing shows, but it's just thanks to the great support we get from everybody uh, in our catchment area. Absolutely, and it, it, but it is an incredible space. I mean, it is it is an amazing theatre. Acoustically speaking, it's it's a beautiful big stage. It's got such a even though it's a big theatre, it's always felt very warm and very inviting. And I, I mean, I feel so proud to be a part of the kind of the Milton Keynes, uh, you know, kind of culture and you know the skyline. I watched the theatre go up, or you know, those years ago in the gallery, and it's just it's just yeah, it's going to be such a joyous joyous time. And obviously, then we've got we'll have um, six as well, which we've seen already as well which is was fantastic i love six it that was a great surprise and that, that that's that's going to sell out and obviously hairspray which is just such a joy and then panto we'll be talking we'll probably be talking about panto now but panto <laughs> is the, the big draw isn't it and we've got diversity this year haven't we yeah and di di uh, diversity are so popular when they come and do occasionally they've been to Milton Keynes and done their one night dance show and it's it's one of the um, one of the shows that comes to us that just always sells out in hours so it's brilliant to have them in our pantomime this Christmas for so many more families will get to see diversity do their thing on our stage um, in a pantomime as well so it's, it will be such a joy and we can't wait for that one. And is there anything you could sort of say to people who are feeling a little bit apprehensive and a bit nervous about you know I mean obviously all those measures are put in place and, and as a theatre goer I'm desperate to get back. For those maybe who haven't have been shielding, haven't really gone out much. I mean, you know, how how is that going to feel? Do you think for them? It's 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 you know. I guess you know we've got all the testing and things like that. But how do we make it feel right for them and secure? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question, and I think it's everybody is going to be very different. It's a very personal decision about whether you feel like you're ready to go to the theatre or on an aeroplane or go to the cinema. I mean, I, I think I would say is that um, it probably is a bit daunting to do it and when you haven't been for such a long time and you're not sure what it will be like. So my advice would be to give it a go because we really have thought of everything we can to make it as safe as possible. So I think um, the good thing about a theatre is, is when you're in the auditorium and sat in your seat, it's a very restricted environment, really. Everybody's facing the same way. Um, and I think people will feel much safer 
really in a theatre than they might do wandering around a shopping centre where it's a lot less, there's a lot more freedom of movement of people. Sure. And are we, are we, will we be, because I know you've mentioned the possibility of having to wear masks, um, are, will we be allowed to stay and participate? Because obviously I know that was a concern. And obviously, obviously with a show like Rocky Horror, where there's so much audience participation and, and you know, got to stand up and do the time walk, are we going to be allowed to do these things? Well, the, the plan is when we reopen, we won't be restricting any of that. Um, we will ask, as we always do, that people stay in their seat. Sometimes people do stand up to applaud at the end of numbers or when they're invited to do so. Um, so there will always be some, some restrictions in place in a theatre, but it's not going to hamper people's in, enjoyment. There'll be absolutely time to sit in a seat and sing along to your favourite song. And, and as I said, lots of shows. So I'm guessing you know you're, what, you're, you're watching shows become sold out quite quickly. That must be exciting. You know, as a as theatre director, you must, this is your job, this is to get bums on seats, to entice people in. You know, that must, that must make you feel really, you know, this is actually happening now. Yeah, I mean, we're really reassured to see that um, there is such a demand for tickets again and that people want to come back. And I think that's partly because it's something they haven't been able to do for such a long time. But I think the strength of the shows and the programme as we've just talked about is really um, enticing people back to. Um, but yeah, there's no greater sight for me than a full auditorium. Um, I, I almost, when I walk through the auditorium when there's no show on stage and it's all in darkness and the seats are all empty, it kind of makes me shudder. I definitely much rather see a full auditorium than anything else. And for those people behind the scenes, you know, you know, it's not just the actors, as you say, it's front of staff, it's, it's you know, it's the, it's the, the designers, the costume, you know, the choreographers, this, it's going to be such a joyous occasion because, you know, I think if you, unless you work in theatre, you don't realise how much work goes into a production. You sit, you yourself say you've got 150 people in your team, which I'm, I mean, I've been going to Milton Theatre for 20 years, I had no idea it was quite that large, but, you know, full scale production is not, you know, not just what we see on stage, it's, it's what, what goes on behind the sheer volume, you know, you see the, the kind of pantechnicans of the car park outside and you think, gosh, this is a really big show. I mean, that, that must be exciting for them as well. And, you know, for you as, as, a, as a director, sort of talking to those people who are behind the scenes, who are just an integral part of the show as the actors and are on stage. Yeah, and I think this year has made us feel part of one industry more than we've ever felt before, you know, because, We've been lucky, those of us who work in a theatre, that we've been supported by the government's um, uh, furlough scheme, but lots of freelancers and lots of people who work in services that support theatre, you know, who might work on short term contracts, haven't had the same support. And I think it's been a tough year for theatres, but it's been an incredibly tough year if you're a supplier of sound and lighting equipment or if you're somebody who um, tours the country working in a wardrobe, back of house, or is a, um, a technician on a touring show. You know, it's, it's made us realise what an ecosystem we are and how every part of our industry depends on every other part. So you're right, when our theatres open, um, it's lovely to walk backstage and see um, be, be so passionate and so dedicated to the tiny part they play in putting on a on a show and I always think when people are getting in their car to go home they should really think about the um the ladies and men who work in wardrobe and who probably the work the longest hours because long after everyone else has gone the washing machines are going and the costumes are being ironed and they're normally first in in the morning and first out in the after in the evening and I just think people they're like um, ghosts or fairies. Nobody knows that they're there do, working away really, really hard. But so as, as do so many other people, I mean, we um, can't list them all, but it is a, um, a fascinating process behind the scenes. And I guess there's, there's probably more work is made because one is, you know, they're going to have to be more careful in terms of cleanliness and all that sort of thing. So I guess it's, it's you know, glad to be back, but probably, probably going to have to work even harder than they ever did before. Yeah, and I think just work differently, really. Everything is slightly different. Um, but going back to what you were saying about Milton Keynes Theatre being, you know, quite kind of, a, you remember it, it opening 21 years ago. Um, lucky to be a new-ish building with lots of windows and lots of light and lots of airy spaces. I think 
um, good ventilation and having lots of space to spread people out in is still key at the moment and that makes people feel more, more confident about being inside so our building really is um, going to help us to do that. It is a, an amazing space and, and, and on a personal level how did you get into theatre management I, you know I, I'm, I'm always intrigued. Well, I've, I've only ever worked in theatre since I left university. I worked in, um, I was a press officer at a theatre down in, um, in Kent, the Orchard Theatre in Dartford. That was my first job. And then I was a marketing manager and a head of marketing at various theatres. And then I, um, I ended up being a theatre director. I was at the Wickham Swan in High Wickham before I came to Keynes Theatre. Um, Dream job then. Yeah, I mean, the best job, but I'm sure many people think they've got the best job, job in the world, but I certainly love mine. Well, it never feels like work if you're doing, you know, if, if it's the right thing, though, doesn't it, and, you know, for you. Well, it's been so, so lovely to talk to you, honestly, Emma, it's been a, a joy. I cannot wait to see you on, on press night. Um, with or without drag, it's going to be, a, you know, the, the urge to hug people and just, it's just, you know, I think, as you said, it's going to be highly, highly charged and emotional time, um, but so excited and uh, God willing, everything goes according to plan as well. But it's been an absolute joy to talk to you. It really has. And so some amazing shows. So I'd sort of say visit the uh, ATG website uh, for Milton Keynes Theatre. Uh, we'll put the links up above after the show as well. But uh, thank you for appearing on the Nancy Stevens Show you know, celebrating all everything in the arts and entertainment world. Emma Sullivan, thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy. See you soon. See you. Bye. Bye.